time. Is it in a folder? Yes. What's it called? Math expressions. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Getting ready. Go to your grade level. There it is. Oh. When you open your folder, that's everything that's in there. Okay, this getting ready to teach section, now that everybody's found it, what I did is I went online, grabbed this, just this part of the, the unit, this getting ready to teach section, and I put them in PDFs for you. what there should be in there. Nobody sees that? What, what happens yeah. when you click on the fourth grade? I clicked on the fifth grade. When I clicked on A. But we don't have we that. We don't have that. Yeah. That, is it, is it, oh. Why would that? Yeah. Is it showing up on yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. We'll make sure you get it all. The reason I did this, I just want to tell you the reason I did this for you, because all of these unit getting ready to teach sections, if you have them on your computer, sometimes it's just easier to read there. Yeah. And then you can also take these PDFs and attach them to um, emails for parents. If a parent is like, oh my gosh, I don't understand this, look through the getting ready to teach. It not only explains what it's doing in each lesson, but it gives pictures too. So if you have a parent that is really upset and you just need to give them one more thing to help them through, this would be a good thing to give them. Um, Christine? Yeah. No, no, so in my download yeah. um, field, I try to download it. Okay. We'll figure that out, but we're gonna keep going here. So this part here, really, really crucial to read. Do you see the blue sections? Were you told about the blue sections in this part off to the side? Uh, yeah, the little, um, it's the common core sta yeah. standards. No. Okay. okay. Except, except there. Yeah, those are really nice informational pieces to read. It's, they're right out of um, uh, the documents from common core and uh, it, explains how they're matching common core to what the activity you're doing. Okay, so they're good to read. Make sure though you really look at this. The third grade, you have the routine that it starts out with on here. And it gets kind of fuzzy on how to do it. We're gonna run you through the routine so that everybody knows how to do that third grade multiplication division routine because it's a good way to practice for the um, basic facts, okay? Yeah. So now that's how I uh, start tackling. Before I even read lesson one, I've gone over the assessments, the quick quizzes, and the getting ready to teach section. Those three things, if you're not doing that, you're gonna be kind of going in through a blind. So let's now go to lesson one. And did she go over, did your person go over this in all the different parts of the lesson? Yep, she talked about this. Okay. And then all this is here. Okay. So there's, I'm just going to highlight two things. So I want you on your unit one yellow page or orange page there, because I'm going to tell you the first thing everybody forgets or doesn't even look at is the quick practice. 
and it's the first five minutes of every lesson. So were you told about the quick practice? Oh, yeah. Okay. The quick practice, since it's on this page that looks like just a teacher page and it doesn't look like anything to do with students, what teachers normally do is forget about it and they just go into activity one and they don't even look at it. And then they're like, Laura, there is not enough practice here. My kids need more practice. And I'm saying, are you doing your quick practices? And they're like, no. I'm like, that's where the practice is. So you need to make sure you're doing those quick practices. They're five minutes. Do not make it any longer than five minutes, even set a stopwatch. Your students should be leaders there, okay? Now what you're gonna find is that on one lesson, it gives all the directions. And then the next lesson will say, follow lesson whatever's directions, and it won't give you any more directions. So what I did on here, to make your life just a little bit easier, Quick practices, your grade should have all the quick practices and you have a one pager for each unit. You can print out and that way you can just keep it. You don't have to be flipping back and forth in your book and it tells you when to use which quick practice for what lesson. Okay. This is also good to have for subs. Let me just click on one so you see what it looks like. So it'll just give you which lesson it's used for and then the directions for it. So this saves you going back and forth all the time. And like I said, copy it, put it in your subfolders too so that they have it. Yeah, it is because um, the teachers that I've done it for before really like this. So I wanted to make sure it was done again in the new one. So quick practice, quick practice, quick practice. Don't forget about it, student play. Okay? So turn your page. And you have the activity um, up in the like up in the corner. It'll say activity, and it'll give you a time. I would, for a while anyhow, use a timer and set that time to how much time you have for that activity. What I'm finding is teachers are teaching way too slow. I mean, you've got to be moving. I have one fifth grade teacher that says, "Yep, it's not time. Let's go." I mean, that's how he starts it. And like they're on a pace like that all, the whole hour. It's a 60 minute lesson they have set for you. There is no time put in that 60 minutes for correcting homework. Okay, so we need to figure out something else for that and what else to do for that. Okay, so we, that homework issue is one other, uh, is something else we're gonna talk about. So let's just think about that lesson. Another thing I see teachers do is way over teach. They just keep talking and talking and talking and trying to re-explain and re-explain. The more you have the kids do, the less talking you do, the faster this is going to go. So don't over teach and don't teach way too slow. So those are the two mistakes that I see most teachers make in this taking forever. Your first year through this, you're going to feel like you're crawling, especially fifth grade teachers with fractions. Because you have your first five units are all fractions. Yeah, I mean, your whole first half of the year, almost three quarters of the year is on fractions. So um, fractions and decimals, that's what your life's gonna be about. Third grade, your life's about uh, multiplying and dividing up. Fourth grade, you get some really cool stuff. <laughs> I like the fourth grade one, the fourth grade one's fun. With all the different methods and everything. Yeah, you're gonna have fun. <laughs> the well, other ones are like, this is broke. <laughs> 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 Let's see, so um, pay attention to those times and go to the end of your lesson now. You see a red box that says formative assessment down below. I read that first before I even start teaching the lesson. This is your target. So this is like, you can make your I can statements out of here. I know you have to do that. Yes, no, I'm going to that. Okay, yeah. Um, but if you read this, formative assessment, this is the goal for your lesson. You know what activity you can kind of skim through and what activity you need to spend a lot of time on. So that's really important to read before you even start reading the lesson through. All your teaching tips off to the side. Oh my gosh, read those. They're really good. Like I said, this book is the only book that teaches you how to teach math. 
and it's through those side columns and the explanations of um, how you're teaching that will do it. So it's going to pay off to read the book. I had one teacher, I went into her room to, to um, coach and all she did was look at pictures and then talk from the pictures and never read a thing. Her kid, I'm like, I can't do anything. It was just insane. Read the book. Read. It takes time, but you're good. Like, I would be sleeping with this book. <laughs> I remember when I changed from first grade to fifth grade, and I was fine with the math, I was fine with the science, but man, I had that social studies book with me, <laughs> like, wherever I went. Okay, questions about a lesson. What else do you need to know about a lesson? Do they write every day? Because. Now, that green differenti differentiating page, I'm glad you brought that up. Because your first year of implementation, you will probably not have time to get to any of that. I would focus just on the tier one good instruction, and that's the lesson. I wouldn't focus on that differentiation page at all unless you need it for your upper kids to do a challenge. Um, for those kids that are just flying through, you need something else for them to do. Uh, I always say that first year, just hold off. Do what you want to out of there, but don't think that you need to add that in. What about holding them accountable for vocabulary? Vocabulary is as you're going through. Uh, the way I look at vocabulary is it just a must that we're just using the right vocabulary all the time. I want to hear the words product. I want to hear the words factor. I want to hear this. You know, you're just you always want them to speak mathematically, and that should be the goal in the classroom. Well, we yeah. we were talking earlier about maybe having a math yeah. vocabulary. Journal. 